It is cardio time and we are raising it to 40 minutes. So 40 minutes, God damn it. Burning this fat off. Gotta get shredded. So we only have a couple, what? A couple more weeks? A couple more weeks of what? Three or four more weeks to get shredded before we fill out <laughs> and get full, round, and big. Can't wait to fill out. Because I'm feeling pretty fucking skinny. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> dropping your shit. Yeah, I dropped my phone. But you got your uh, old DMA there. Ah. Yeah, I'll tell you guys, it's a fucking head fuck for me. I'm feeling skinny. Muscle dysmorphia. Yes, I admit it. I'm ready just to say, fuck this. Let's do bigger by the day and just get huge. <laughs> That's so much more fun. <clears throat> and easy. Right? I think you just miss carbs. Yeah, but I also miss being big. You are big. You are so crazy. <laughs> I don't feel like it. I feel like a skinny little bitch. <clears throat> Cardio. Anyway, guys, stay motivated, damn it. Don't let me demotivate you. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get shredded, shredded abs, veins everywhere. So, and then maybe we'll get big later. <laughs> okay, guys, don't forget stretching. Goddamn it, gotta stretch every goddamn day. Get limber. Ah. Feels good on my lower back, my quads, hip flexors, and then just boom, right? It is meal number one, and I got my all day you may. I am on my second bottle of all day you may, and it's still morning time. At least you're staying hydrated. Ah, BCAs. And I'm going to eat, this is my burger leftover. Um, they fucked up my burger, they overcooked it, and I just very politely, you know, mentioned that to the waitress, and they actually took it off the bill and made me a new fucking burger to go. Pretty good fucking service. So my question is, was the manager of the restaurant aware of who I was, and aware that I was gonna talk shit? Or was he just, is it just super awesome fucking customer service? What do you think, babe? Uh, I think he kind of possibly knew you might talk shit on the internet. <laughs> what the fuck, this motherfucking piece of shit rest, don't ever eat here. <laughs> no, but I mean, like, they had really good customer service otherwise. No, so that was a nice sweet. place, good customer service. Everybody the said hello and goodbye, so that was cool. And I'm eating this motherfucker cold, so a plastic fork isn't really cutting it too well. Why are you doing that? I have regular forks. I know, here. because, I, you know, I don't know. It's gotta make things difficult. Yeah, it's gotta make it difficult living on the edge, goddammit. Oh, look at that. That's oh, cooked pretty fucking even it sat perfect. For a minute. That is cooked pretty perfect. Yeah, it, there was no red in it at the restaurant, right, babe? Mm -hmm. But that is perfection. And their meat is very good quality meat, so no complaints there. Yep. Mmm. Yes. With the egg on top, bacon. And blue cheese crumbles on the bottom. I can't and imagine blue cheese with an egg. That sounds so bizarre. Well, I mean, it, like, we do it with well, our cob, cob salad. Yeah. But I mean, like, a breakfast looking egg. That sounds and so bizarre. They don't really do lettuce wraps, obviously. They just kind of put it on a bed of lettuce. <laughs> so, um, I don't think that's real popular in Florida. You know, like, you go to LA and Every place you go to does lettuce wraps. It's like a known thing. I feel you like, know. you know, in the South and the East Coast, people mm. are more about their carbs, their bread. Like, I mean, New York, for example, every fucking street corner has the fucking bakery. So, I mean, you go to Louisiana, they don't serve you fruit with your breakfast. They give you fucking grits or home fries. So I just think that maybe it's a California thing. Everybody's I think the whole fucking world yoga and shit. It's all about carbs. <laughs> <laughs> Except for California, those bitches about fucking yoga, vegan, <laughs> natural, organic shit. 
But it's not 83 degrees in California. I right? know, <laughs> it's like, I, <laughs> I miss my food that I'm familiar with in California, but I don't really miss the cold winter weather. Yep, we actually were laying out by a pool. God damn it, yesterday a little bit, right? <laughs> yep, a whole 30 minutes. <laughs> hey, fucking in, you know, the middle of winter, whatever it is right now. Yeah. I mean, mm. I was still going to the beach in like December and January, so here and there. Mmm, this shit is good. It looks good. You're making me hungry. Hurry up and finish eating. I'm sorry, eating. babe. <laughs> you should have said your burger was fucked up too. <laughs> <laughs> so what's our plan? We gotta get ready for Australia. I know, fuck. It's gonna be nice weather in Australia too. It's gonna be hot. I haven't even packed my suitcase from the goddamn Arnold, Ohio, let alone Start packing for. Like you didn't have to unpack fucking it. Fucking Australia. I unpacked it. Oh, you unpacked it for me. I unpacked it yesterday. Oh, okay, cool. Well, I guess my shit's unpacked. God damn it. Yeah, <laughs> just like how the dishes magically get done when you're done making your shake. <laughs> so, what are we gonna train at the gym today? That's the question. I don't know. What are you up for training? I think it's an easy day. I hate to say it, but I think it's like fucking calves and arms. Easy fucking day. Oh, so you mean just arms for me? Is your back sore? Um, yeah, my lats hurt. Yeah, you did a lot of new exercises you never done before. Yeah, it was good though. I like felt the stretch and felt the squeeze, so I usually don't. I have a hard time with that. Yep, the mind muscle connection. A lot of people. <laughs> There's not a whole lot going on up here apparently, so that's why I don't have the mind muscle connection. <laughs> a lot of people, though, they go through, they train for years and years and years, and they never learn that concept, you know? Mm -hmm. So important. Like Arnold Schwarzenegger said, he said that he can walk into a gym and do one exercise, do one set of one exercise, and he, he honestly believed he could get more out of that one set than most people get in a whole hour of training. Because they're just, you know, mindlessly just going through the motions. Well, and especially now in the gym, everybody's on their damn phone or Snapchatting or I need to make a video for Instagram. Huh. I mean, it's fun or whatever, but are you guys actually focused on your workout? I mean, I'm kind of a big culprit of that because I have so many people coming up to me during the workout to it take pictures. Distracts. And, yeah. And I don't mind it at all. I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy meeting new people. I enjoy taking pictures. But... The thing I don't understand is a lot of people have to realize that people involved in the fitness community that compete are very, very, very selfish people. And not all, but in general. And what, what you notice is um, they really want to tell you all about them. And uh, they come up and start the conversation with, oh, you know, hey, Rich Piano, oh, you look great. And then they go right into telling you A to Z, everything to do with their show they're getting ready for, the yeah. diet they're doing, the drug regiment, who their coach is, how they're gonna win this show and turn pro. And, and this is between sets, I just did a set. And next thing you know, I'm learning all about this person's competition coming up for 10, 15 minutes. Mm. Without any regards to I'm in the middle of a workout. <laughs> right, babe? Yeah. And it messes up your workout, too. But I guess that just kind of, you know. I goes, wouldn't have it any other way. I mean. Goes with what I do, right? Yeah. So my workouts have really suffered over the years. Um, and I guess I could open a gym or, you know, try to find a more private gym. But, you know, I do somewhat enjoy talking to people and meeting new people. Well, I think it's really sweet when people come up and they're like shaking. Oh my God, is it really you? I'm like, no, no, it's some other guy that's nearly 300 pounds, heavily tattooed. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of them out there. <laughs> Not that look like you, babe. It is so fucking hot here today. It feels like it's at least 90. You know what it is, the temperature is, babe? I have no fucking clue. Isn't it fucking, it's crazy how hot it is, right? Man. I am not bitching either. This okay, weather like, is complaining. to die for. I love the Florida weather. Now, we'll see what I'm saying in fucking August and September. <laughs> I'll be fucking... When it gets humid. Everyone's telling me that I'm not going to be able to make it, that I'll be moving back to Cali. They're like, you have no idea how bad the humidity is. Well, the further south, die. The further south you go, the more humid it is. And the, the crazy thing is, is I was here in August and you were too, right? 
Uh, I was here in July, June, July. Yeah, and well, that's supposed to be the bad month, isn't it? The bad it, it was, but I was south. I was down in the right. Keys by Miami oh, okay. and shit. So it was, it was really humid. Like I walked outside and my face was melting. Like my makeup did not stay on. I didn't wear makeup the whole week. <laughs> but I loved it. Yeah, I was here in August last year, and I, 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 I didn't notice anything. I thought it was great. I didn't bitch about anything. So, I mean, I like the hot. I hate the fucking cold, so I think I'll be good, but we'll see. Well, and the humidity also brings on more, like, uh, thunderstorms and stuff like it does in the Midwest. Well, yeah, that's the thing, too, is they so say it I enjoy it. that. Yeah, it rains in the summer, but not in the winter, so we're in the winter But right it's now. warm rain during the summer. It wasn't Fuck bad. Yeah, it's like warm, when you go to yeah. Hawaii. It's fucking warm. Warm rain is fucking awesome. I think it's And cool. it didn't rain all day long. It just, yeah, it like, came in waves. Yeah, half an hour, and then it's fucking so, over. It was nice. Hell, yeah. Florida's the shit, goddammit. So, we are going to... Where are we going, babe? Uh, Chipotle. Chipotle, <laughs> right? I mentioned maybe we should go to El Pollo Tropical. Is that what it's called? Pollo Tropical. Pollo Tropical. Because Chipotle is chintzing the fuck out of us. It's like, it's crazy how they've changed their shit. Anyone out there, if you have not gone to Chipotle, go to Chipotle. And you're going to be like, what the fuck? Like... They've chintzed on the ingredient, on the fucking portion so much. It's like, you gotta get extra, I mean, even extra meat isn't enough meat. You gotta get triple meat. It's fucking crazy. So, a Pollo Tropical uh, gives you more for your money. Uh, I I think it's, some of the things are better, some of the things aren't. Their cheese is fucking better, right? Mm -hmm. But they don't have sour cream. Uh, they don't have guacamole, or do they? No, I don't think so. Um, so, yeah, and we don't eat beans and rice. And that, that's why I like the Pollo, uh, Pollo Tropical is because those fucking red beans are good. Mm -hmm. And the rice was really good. They have no oil in the rice. So that was that was good. So I guess all we'd be getting if we went there is fucking meat, salsa, and cheese, huh? Yeah. Well, they got grilled onions. Yeah. But they're not really that grilled, huh? They're just kind of No, it bit. would be like getting the fajita vegetables that you get here with meat and then nothing. Right. And cheese. So. Right, so we're stuck at Chipotle, goddammit. So, and uh, we were actually on our way to the gym, and Chanel said she was hungry. And you know me, I can always fucking eat. So I'm like, yeah, let's eat. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> I can always eat. Right? Right. I'm ready to eat. Let's do it. <laughs> so, Chipotle. Chipotle was pretty fucking good today. And um, they did okay, right? It's pretty good. What do you say? Are you happy? Were you satisfied? Yeah, but we don't want to tell him that. Yeah, we want him to keep fucking giving us <laughs> extra shit, right? <laughs> See, we figured out that some places we go are aware of, you know, who we are and what we do. And so we, a lot of times, get special treatment. And then sometimes we don't. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, I think we got a little special treatment today. He hooked us up. All good. Um, so... Uh, we're good to go. You feel better, babe? Yes. You ready to fucking go to the gym and kill it now? Yes. Absolutely. Right on. So, uh, we have a very complicated workout schedule today. <laughs> very complicated. Right? Complicated for us. We're on different body parts, and you're going to be filming me, but you're going to be training yourself, and I'm going to actually help train you. And we got a lot of shit going on. But it's going to be good. I'm looking forward to it. So, because you guys have to realize that Chanel doesn't train chest, obviously, and she doesn't... <laughs> I think it's big enough. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> um, and she doesn't train calves. Her calves are abnormally big. It's probably one of her better body parts, best body parts as far as muscle-wise goes. And I think everyone knows she's not really trying to gain muscle or be a competitor or be muscular. Um, you know, she's, she was a model before I met her and during our first relationship she was still modeling. So that's kind of her look is, you know, looking like a model, softer, you know, maybe a little bit of muscle tone, right? A little bit. I would but, like a little bit more. I know that I'm not in the greatest shape right not now. Not too so much. I'd like it to be better. So your calves are actually too big in your opinion for the rest of your body, right? I would say so. I remember when I first met you, you didn't like me shooting your calves because you thought they were too muscular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Which I think, I think you know, nice calves on a girl is sexy as hell. Um, so we're good. 
but she doesn't train calves. She gets enough work doing the fucking step mill, right? Mm -hmm. um, that works the fucking legs insanely. Step mill is a fucking awesome machine. So therefore, you don't train chest with me, and you don't train calves. And what else? Forearms. I don't train forearms. You don't do forearms. Uh, yeah, so there's times when we have to be on different schedules, but we make it work. So the one thing we do enjoy training together is legs. Um, as you guys know, I've had issues with my fucking knees and my legs and blah, blah, blah. I don't need to tell you guys my fucking problems. But um, I really want to get my legs back up to where they're decent. <laughs> so uh, I've been hitting legs as you guys see, and I, you know, I can only do certain things, I can only do so much, and my knees have been killing me 24 hours a day, and it has affected me, and when we got back from the fucking Arnold, you know, standing up, you know, all those hours straight, non-stop, three days in a row, and then going to the gym and everything else, it, it really took its toll on me, and I really was bedridden for, uh, you know, a couple days, right? A day and a half, probably? Yeah. Just you fall to, asleep with bags of ice on your legs. Just trying to recuperate, you know, went, went in a cold pool and stayed in there, you know, for 30 minutes, um, you know, try to get the swelling down, the inflammation down. When I lived in L.A., I was actually going once every couple of weeks and getting my knees drained. And it was crazy, but, you know, I'd have upwards of 60 cc's of water in my knees, which, um, for the doctor I was seeing, that was unheard of. He said that, you know, normally, you know, he'll see three, four, five cc's, uh, you know, at the most 10 to 15 cc's, he said, you know, it was a really inflamed, you know, uh, you know, swollen, fucked up knee, but he said <laughs> 66 cc's, that was the first he pulled out the first time. He said, that's unheard of. He said, that's just insane. And you could visually see, you know, how swollen my knee was. Um, and I'm obviously not getting that done now. So, um, I'm trying to bring that shit up, trying to bring my legs up. And in the last, you know, leg video, I think you guys saw, I actually posted a picture of me doing a side chest showing my leg. And, you know, it, it, it might not necessarily look bad, but, Knowing that my legs at one time were my best body part, it looks very bad. You know, um, you know, I always had that crazy hanging hamstring from the side that you know it's you don't see too many people that you know have that, and um, that was one of my strongest points, and I don't have it anymore. <laughs> it's not there. So uh, you know, so I'm I'm pushing you know to get back in that direction and at least. You know, get my legs where they somewhat match my upper body. Not bodybuilder terms, you know, definitely not in the 34 inch range, that's for sure. But you know, I'd like to see my quads at about 30, 30 inches, and I'm, I haven't measured them, but I'm guessing they're, you know, they're, I'm sure they're, fuck, 28 maybe. You know, if I could add a good two, you know, solid inches, I think I'd be good to go. I'd be decently happy. Um, that's the goal. So uh, I haven't measured them since we started and I they have gotten bigger You know, but what's crazy is they're not really growing as I anticipated I anticipated them You know because when a certain muscle is your strong point, you know, you know, you can bring it up easily But you know as you get older and you know certain things, you know It doesn't get any easier. So uh, bringing my legs up is is definitely a challenge and uh you know, by the end of this program, I'm going to post pictures of me, you know, posing with my legs 100%. And um, I'm determined uh, for my legs to at least, you know, be comparable and somewhat matching my upper body. Um, so that's the fucking goal, people. The goal is for me to get my legs up there and uh, fight through the pain and deal with it and, you know, whatever it fucking takes. And, you know, just fucking keep pushing and it really sucks that you know every time I squat just with the plate it's just like crack 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 and the next day I can feel it you know and I stay on my heels I go parallel I used to always go below parallel um, 
you know, that was just, that's normal for me is always going below parallel. And I purposely have been just going parallel, you know, to be safe and, uh, you know, just try to get my legs to grow without hurting my knees too much. And, you know, it's difficult. The leg press hurts my knees, but not quite as bad because I can put my, my feet up higher and really put all the weight on my heels. But, you know, the size of my torso, the range of motion is shit. And I could put my feet all the way wide, toes out, um, you know, and I could have better range. But then I'm working primarily the adductors. And I am not a big fan of having huge adductors. Um, I don't think it looks the best. And it's definitely, um, you know, it, uh, you know, you don't really have anywhere for anything to hang if your adductors are touching. So it's very uncomfortable. Um, you know, having your legs rub constantly is very uncomfortable. I definitely am not planning on taking my legs to that extreme <laughs> to where I'm uncomfortable and they're rubbing and, you know, I need to put baby oil and baby powder in between my legs. And I remember I used to wear tights under my sweats or my shorts or my jeans. Um, and I would just, you know, they would wear out and, you know, in within a couple weeks, those tights would be ruined by more. And that's what I had to do. And it just seems, you know, if you're not competing, this seems kind of ludicrous, you know, to take it that extreme. So, so I won't be taking it that far. What about you, babe? You gonna, you trying to build those adductors? Fuck no. Big ass fucking adductors? No. <laughs> Touching? <laughs> no. I do not need to have thunder thighs. I'm good. <laughs> so let's talk about you. What do you think about your legs? Uh, they're smaller than they were, which I like. Like, there's there's less fat on my legs, which is good. Right. But I want them to be leaner. I want to be able to see a little bit more of my outer sweep and my teardrop. Right. I want my calves to be a little bit more cut. Like, they're big, but uh -huh. I want them to be a bit more lean. So, right. that's it, really. I just need so to lean out, really. So, you want to see a little more separation. Yeah. I want a little bit more definition and separation, yeah. And what about the hamstrings from the side view? How do you feel about your hamstring sweep? I actually have a little bit more sweep than I had last year, but... I want it to be just a little bit bigger, not much. Your ass is so big that it takes away from the hamstring sweep, you know, because the bigger your ass is, the smaller your hamstring is going to look. And people out there, um, I try to, I try to shoot Chanel's ass because I love her ass, and you know, she, she, when we do training videos, she wants to just, you know, train. She doesn't want any sex appeal involved, and. I gotta throw that sex appeal in there because that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so uh, once in a while I get a good, nice little shot and people can see how big her ass really is. Um, but I have to sneak it in there and I have to upload the video without her seeing the editing <laughs> in order to get it up there. So uh, that that takes away from the hamstring a little bit too. Is you know when you got a flat ass, your hamstrings just a little bit of sweep, they're gonna fucking be popping. You know so. Uh, so that's that's your downfall, baby. Your ass is too big. <laughs> it takes. It doesn't sound hours. like a bad problem to have. <laughs> now, most people, probably ninety percent of the people out there, um, everyone does their compound movements first, and it's all about ego and strength, correct? And I train the same way for 10, 15 years straight. And you know, when you're training shoulders, what do you do first? You do fucking shoulder presses. When you're training back, what do you do? You know, you do fucking heavy barbell rows or you do your pull-ups. You do your, your heavy compound exercises first when you're the strongest and the freshest. And the truth be told, it's really about the ego and impressing everyone with how strong you are. That's the truth. Uh, most people will never admit that shit. I will admit it because it's the fucking truth. I don't give a fuck. Uh, chest day, what is it? Well, usually go to fucking flat press, bench press, free weights, right? Um, because you want to do it when you're fresh and you want to do as much weight as you can. And you know, if you did, if you did 405 last week for six reps, this week you want to hit at least seven, right? And the truth be told, I think everyone knows deep down inside that that is not the best way to grow your chest, to develop an incredible visually pleasing chest is not about that. Um, when you take the ego out of it and you concentrate solely on, I want to do whatever's best to develop my chest and make it as big as possible, as soon as possible, your workout will change drastically. And that is an example of pre-exhausting the pecs, which what you do is you start with uh, pec deck flies um, or cable flies and you would pyramid up, start with 
like fucking 40 reps, big squeeze every single rep, and as you go, you raise the weight, and you know, all the way down to maybe 12 reps, um, so that might be, you know, six, seven sets straight of pec tech flies. Now, your chest is going to be on fire, it's going to be burning, it's going to be tired, it's going to be exhausted, so when you go to your bench press, you're going to be weaker, it's going to burn, it's going to hurt, and you're going to have to fight through every fucking rep. But as far as, you know, being productive, your chest, <laughs> that's a hundred times more beneficial workout doing it that way than going on the bench press, you know, and resting three minutes between sets and, you know, trying to do as much weight as you can and trying to do more weight than you did last week. You know, that's pure ego. And, um, you know, when you can get, when you can take the ego out of your workout and not give a fuck and just solely train for the reason I think most of us train for is, you know, how good we can look, which not everyone, there's other people out there that are pure power lifters by heart and it's all about heavy weight and it's all about being the strongest motherfucker in the gym. And, you know, if that's the case, then that's fucking awesome. You know, figure out what you want and go in that direction. And if you're about powerlifting, you're about heavy weight, and you know, your goal is being the strongest motherfucker, and you know, then you know what? Then you keep training that way. Now, if you're a bodybuilder, you know, and you're trying to build an impressive chest, then you know, I'm trying to show you a more productive way of getting to your goal faster, and that's getting your ego out of the gym. And uh, you know, that's once you can do that, you'll see drastic changes in your progression as far as becoming a bodybuilder and getting bigger and more mature muscle. Very important is you see a lot of people that they're they're big and they have the mass, but they don't really have the mature muscle. And um, you know, there's I, I, you know, some parts of my body are that way also. You know. Um, when, when you train super heavy and you do low reps for a, a certain amount of years, you can gain mass and thickness and not have the maturity and the definition. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about training right and acquire, you know, trying to accomplish whatever it is your goal is. Okay, everyone, you notice this Chipotle cup? It's a fucking water cup, and I put fucking iced tea in the fucking water cup, so technically I fucking stole iced tea from Chipotle. The only reason I'm pointing that out is because other people pointed out to me in the past that that was pretty fucking funny. <laughs> I posted a picture at Chipotle eating, and they're like, that son of a bitch, he got a water cup and put iced tea in it. What a cheap fucking bastard. <laughs> I found that funny as fuck. And uh, fuck, I don't know, it's a, I guess it's a bad habit I've had since I was fucking nine years old. And I just have continued to do it, what can I say? And then I, you know, and then I tip everyone, so what the fuck, I'd rather, you know. Anyway, I have no excuses. I'm a thief, what the fuck can I say? Am I gonna have to cut that part out, babe? Probably. When we get home, are you gonna be like, oh yeah, I think we need to cut this out, Rich. <laughs> Which means you're probably gonna keep it in. <laughs> what the fuck is that? A Lamborghini? That's my car. <laughs> That's pretty fucking sick right there. Show the show the audience. Look at the Italian brakes. Are those Italian or Hispanic? Uh, I would assume Italian because Lamborghinis are Italian cars. <laughs> How many times I gotta tell you not to make me look bad on video, goddammit? Jeez! I don't make you look bad. You make yourself look bad. Well, you but you have to point it out and highlight it and fucking put a dot on top, or. Whatever. <laughs> All right, now I'm making myself look bad. Okay, I admit it. Anyway, that is some sick fucking shit right there. I love how they did the brakes. That's pretty fucking creative. I've never seen that before. It's pretty sick. So, all right, now it's time to throw this Maserati in the garbage after seeing that shit. God damn it! <laughs> all right. The funny thing is like, you know, when I was talking to Martin, you know, Martin has, um, he has a Ferrari 458 and he has a Rolls Royce Wraith. And I believe he also has, I don't know if it's a, a Phantom or if he has a Bentley, but he has, I don't know what the third car is, but he, um, he actually, uh, you know, he, he, he really 
can, I mean, I don't know how the fuck you can drive them because I can't fucking, I can't really fit in a Lamborghini or Ferrari. I mean, the 458 is supposed to be a little bigger. I never sat in a 458, so, you know, maybe, maybe that's the exception of the rule, but I don't fucking, I don't know how the fuck. Now, the Rolls Royce, right? That's a wonderful story. <laughs> right, babe? Mm hmm. I've never been one, but I would assume. Yeah. Well, we were looking at them at the dealership, remember? We got a yeah, they look bigger. Pretty sick. So if you could have any fucking car right now, what would you want? <laughs> the new Lambo. The new Lambo, the fucking, the, the Avenger, what's it called? The source of the A? Uh, Avenger or the uh, Av Avenger. Aventor? I think, I think it's Aventor. Yeah, the one that's only $560,000. No, the other one we saw at the dealership was like... Two sixty nine. I don't think that was a, a mentor though. Well, it looked fucking rad, so I would I would make an exception <laughs> and take that one. So it'd be Lamborghini, Lamborghini over Ferrari. Yes. Yes. You yes. say it like there's no comparison. Yeah. I, this yes. What's really sad is I had a I had a, a Barbie Ferrari. You know how you get like the pow pow power wheels, the little plug-in right. cars. I had a pink Ferrari when I was a kid, uh -huh. and then all my Barbies had a white Ferrari. Uh huh. But. I prefer Lambo over Ferrari as an adult. So. And uh, the Lambo over the McLaren. Oh yeah, McLarens look like shit in person. I don't like them. <laughs> I'm sorry. What else? Uh, Bugatti. Ooh, I don't know. I kind of like the Bugatti. Those are kind of cool looking. I don't know. I'd so, probably still take the Lambo. So when we were at the dealership, people, I was talking to the guy, and do you know how much one tire on a Bugatti is? One brand new tire. You get a flat, you need to buy a brand new tire. Do you know how much a tire costs for a Bugatti? $20,000. $20,000 for one fucking tire. Not the rim, one fucking tire, rubber. $20,000, that's what he told me at the dealership. So if I'm wrong, that motherfucker doesn't know what he's talking about, but I'm just telling you, I'm just regurgitating the information I got from the guy at the dealership. That's what he told me. That's some fucking crazy shit. So you need four new tires, fucking eighty thousand dollars, and those tires, you know, they're they're they don't last very long. So that's some crazy shit. And the new, uh, the new demon that's going to be coming out in the next what month or two, babe? Those also have fucking racetrack tires. Um, it's the first production car to have fucking street legal racetrack tires. That's some crazy shit. And I think they're 325s. So it's, I think it's the biggest production tire ever on a production car. 325s, you know how big that is. And you know you're, that you're is. speaking foreign language to me now. Well, you can pretend. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely know what the fuck you're talking about right now. All right, guys, today we're gonna kill chest. And this is gonna be an awesome fucking workout. So I'm starting off with flat press, and as you guys know, you can choose any flat press you like. I really like this machine. It's fucking awesome. Um, come up, squeeze it. The weight's going to be, you know, moderate to heavy, and just make sure you get a good squeeze on top. Then we're going to go, second exercise is dumbbell flies, which is something I very rarely do. Um, if you go all the way to the top, there's no resistance. So therefore, I come three quarters up to keep constant tension on my pecs. And doing it this way really hits the outer pecs. So when you're standing sideways, giving that illusion of that huge chest and huge rib cage, standing on stage, this is an incredibly important thing to have, is to be thick from the side in the chest. So this will really bring out those outer pecs. Then I go straight to decline press. And the decline press also works outer, but also works the lower portion. Now, as you guys know, you really can't hit chest and not train the whole fucking muscle. You can't work only upper or only lower or only outer or only inner, but we can isolate the best way possible. So just keep that in mind. So after that, I go to pec deck flies and this, I'm gonna go a little bit higher reps to really get that pump fucking burning, to really get a lot of blood in the muscle and I just squeeze every rep Stretch as far as you can. It's very important. The deeper the stretch, the harder the contraction. I learned that from Arnold, and it's true as fuck. All right, next exercise. Close grip bench, but notice the elbows are going out. When elbows go out, you're hitting your inner pecs. Now, when your elbows stay in tight to the body, you're hitting your tricep. 
Most people don't realize this. When they do their close grip bench, they let their elbows go out because it allows you to do more weight. Therefore, they're hitting their chest, not their fucking tries. Very important. All right, next exercise, I'm doing cable crossovers, but something a little different. I'm gonna try to isolate the inner portion following the last exercise, which was mostly inner chest. So what I'm doing is I'm doing 10 full reps, as you can see, 10 full reps, and then I'm gonna switch it to 10 half reps, just doing the last portion of the exercise, which is the inner chest. So I'm really isolating and blasting the inner pecs. And this is a great way to do cables. And I mess around and do different shit all the time. Mix it up, confuse the fucking body. So give these a try. And I like to do 10 and 10, but you can change that around. Um, sometimes I do 15 and 15. Now this set, I'm gonna do the exact opposite. I'm gonna hit the inner chest first. 10 reps, isolate the inner chest, get it burning. And then I'm gonna go to the 10 full reps. And this way is actually harder than the other because you're doing the easier exercise first. So doing the full reps last makes the exercise that much harder. And I gotta admit that as you guys watch, you'll see that it was I was second guessing myself if I was even gonna get those last 10 reps. <laughs> so it definitely made it harder but my chest was fucking on fire. My chest is burning, and as you can see, I'm not quite touching at the bottom because it was fucking hard as fuck. So anyway, guys, that was a great fucking chest workout, and you guys know what to do. As soon as you finish, you're getting those nutrients in and drinking your fucking shake, and that shake better be fucking real food, goddammit. No chemicals and no bullshit. All right, guys, it is dinner fucking time, food run, goddammit, and it is Cheesecake Factory. And as you guys know, this has become a regular fucking habit because we ain't got shit in Florida to eat. So cheesecake's the best fucking scenario. So that's what we're doing, motherfucking Cheesecake Factory. And just in case you guys were wondering who owns that fucking car right there, I'm gonna take a really big guess and I'm gonna say it's Toothbrush Dave. What do you think? What is Toothbrush Dave? So anyway, Toothbrush Dave, what's up, brother? Just giving you a shout out. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck that means, what you're selling, but um, we've seen people, I would guess oral hygiene. We've seen some people <laughs> walk by the car and everyone seems to fucking make a comment. So it's fucking working, whatever it is. <laughs> you ready to grub, babe? I'm starving. Fucking let's get out of here. Grub time. Okay.